one of the great things about uh, this entire community, uh, nobody likes disasters, nobody likes a crisis, but you know, we always say it, neighbors helping neighbors, uh, but the reality is that's what happens. And some of it's literally individuals, but a lot of it comes from organizations that are here day in and day out, and they, they do things for the residents of this area that we never see until something like this happens. And then they step up and they, they do jobs. And, and I will say, you know, I've been in this position now for over 10 years. And uh, one of the most fascinating things about it is how many groups there are who are helping residents in our area who, you know, they really don't have to be asked. And, you know, I don't have to ask them. And the mayor doesn't have to ask them. They just do it day in and day out, and that makes everybody's life better. But at a time like this, where it's particularly uh, troublesome for the entire community, uh, it, it's good to know these groups. And they're organized, it's called VOAD. It's the Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. Uh, they're active all the time, actually, but they do come together during a disaster. Way too much the last three years. Way too much the last three <laughs> years. And so, like I said, it's my job to introduce them. And so I met earlier with Matt Johns. He's from Catholic Charities, and he's the chair of the Gulf Coast, Texas Regional VOAD. And again, that's Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. And I was smiling when I came out here because when I met with Matt, um, I said, well, who's going to be here? And he said, well, I don't know, and he named two or three, and he said, <clears throat> probably probably just a very few. So I walked across, got out of the elevator, walked across, and I looked out, and <laughs> here they are. And what that says is, one more time, uh, people care about what's happening. And each one of these people up here represents hundreds, if not thousands, of other people uh, that are going to spend weeks, months, and years uh, helping us get back on our feet. So with that, let me turn this over, and then I'm just going to disappear uh, because they can answer any questions you have about what they do. And so once again, I'll, I'll introduce Matt Johns from Catholic Charities. Matt? Thank you. Judge, thank you. And thank you all so much for giving time and attention to this. I, I tell you, I've, I've been able to spend the entire weekend here from the, uh, the start before landfall uh, until now. And we, I have been absolutely blown away by the, the, the talent that we have here in this building at Transtar, what's going on uh, with the city of Houston and their office, their uh, emergency operations as well. We're incredibly blessed in this city. And uh, the way everybody's working, coordinating together has been tremendous. But the reality is, uh, there's really only so far that government can take us. Uh, there's only so much money that's available from the government. At some point, the community has to take over. And that's where the VOAD comes in. That's us. We are the regional VOAD for the 13 counties, the HGAC region here. And we're responding to the disaster needs. Now, as the judge mentioned, we've been awfully busy and unusually busy over the last three years with the flooding. But what we're experiencing now is absolutely unprecedented. So it's going to take the work of all of our organizations, churches, nonprofits, community organizations, to collaborate and coordinate our efforts to make sure that people who need help get the help that they need, who need funds to get the funds that they need. And that is the work of the VOAD. We act as leaders in, the, in, in our respective communities. We happen to be the regional VOAD for this section of Texas. There's a Texas state VOAD. There's a national VOAD. And we work in close collaboration with our government partners, our national partners, and we tap into these resources to be able to allow people to get the help that they need and to work as quickly as possible to get that to them. We have systems and processes that allow this to happen quickly. Um, and this takes us from all the different phases of a disaster, from the point where we, uh, we, we just experienced where we're getting people to safety. And now we're in the relief mode, where we're going to be getting people to a place where they can uh, get back to their lives. And then we're going to enter into a long, long period that we call recovery. And 
we hear the FEMA director talking about it, and he's uh, talking about how it's going to take years. And it is. It's going to be a long, long process. And that's our job as the community. That's our job as the VOAD, and we're inviting all of you, anybody in a church, anybody in a nonprofit, anybody in any community organization to join us in this effort so that we can help you access the resources that you know that your community needs. We work with people regardless of any status, any religious affiliation. We work with everybody. It's a humanitarian effort. And we have all these tremendous organizations. Just, this is just a piece of the, the organizations that are represented by the VOAD. We have over 40 organizations that we represent. I'm sorry, that represent us as a VOAD. We are not a nonprofit. We are a collaborative. We have chosen, we have voluntarily chosen to use our agency's assets and resources to help people in the event of a disaster. So I do encourage everybody, we, uh, we want to get the ball rolling right. I've heard a lot of response uh, from a number of churches, from a number of community organizations and nonprofits that are seeking some way right now that they can take action. Well, we're going to meet about this. We want to talk to you face to face. So this upcoming Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, uh, the wonderful community at St. John's Church downtown off Crawford has offered their facilities for us for a 7 o'clock meeting. So Tuesday at 7 o'clock at St. John's Church downtown, we're going to be meeting, and we invite all of you, if you're interested in helping Come learn about what this process is. Come learn about how we can offer these resources through what, the work that you're already doing. We don't want to control what you're doing. We don't want to tell you what to do or how to do it. We just want to make sure we're all coordinated and moving the boat in the same direction. Maybe boat isn't the best analogy to be using right now. <laughs> but we want to get everybody going in the right direction because we want this recovery to happen quickly. And the only way we can do that is by working together and making sure that we're collaborating and utilizing our resources most effectively. Um, I also want to mention that for those of you who do want to get started right now, we have a portal that we created. All right, it looks like we lost our audio there uh, and I think our video as well. A uh, live press conference at Transstar started with Harris County Judge Ed Emmett uh, talking about volunteers. And then he stepped aside and allowed uh, Matt Johns uh, with Catholic Charities to talk about how to get involved, coordinating efforts with several different organizations. Let's listen back in. What kind of resources you have in your area and maybe, maybe we can even start connecting you with other organizations you didn't know existed that are doing similar or the same work and can enhance the work that you are already doing. So that, that kind of covered most everything? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm opening this up to any questions you may have at this time as well. A question. Uh, Go ahead. Following social media, you see a lot of people basically reaching out to each other, hey, uh, who's accepting volunteers? Who's accepting donations? Some people are getting turned down because they have too many volunteers. Yeah. Some people are not accepting donations because they just have too many. Will this process that you're talking about maybe kind of help streamline that process of guiding people in the right direction, knowing where to drop stuff off, knowing where to help out? That, that's, a, that's a perfect question to start out with. Everybody wants to help right now, right? So the question is, what do we do about volunteers? If I want to volunteer, where do I go? If I want to donate, where do I go? We already have two great uh, portals to get there right now. Uh, but let me, I, I need to explain something first. There are a lot of people who want to help at this time. A lot of people who want to help, not just from here. I took a call the other day from the call center upstairs. Somebody was offering to bring their 14, well, 14 foot skiff from Minnesota. So people from all over the country want to bring whatever they can here, but especially people here want to help. Please know that our nonprofit organizations are working hard. They're just now getting back into their offices. They're just now figuring out what damage is done to their particular offices. They're figuring out Who's been affected on their staffs? So we have to have a little bit of patience with our nonprofit community right now. They're working very, very hard and meeting our clients' needs, but also trying to get everybody in the door to help. And once we figure out what those needs are, we guarantee you we'll be asking for help in abundance. But with that being said, 
We, uh, the portal we have right now is at volunteerhouston.org. Even if you don't see a volunteer opportunity on there right now that you can tap into or that relates to your gifts and talents, volunteerhouston.org will be a place where you can register and show your desire to volunteer at this time. If you want to, you can also call at 281-656-1533. We have partners in Louisiana who graciously opened up a phone bank for us to be able to take calls at this time, too. And while we may not be able to answer your call immediately, we will be getting back to you soon. And with that being said, donations. Donations are big right now. Lots are coming in. We've got people bringing in different 18-wheelers from all around the country. We humbly ask that you call first before bringing it here. Two days ago, we had things coming in, and the roads weren't clear. Right now, we've got things coming in, and we have to make sure it goes to the right place. So please, please call ahead if you have a major donation to bring. Even if you don't have a major donation to bring, but you have something that you want to offer, the phone number for that is 1-800-924-5985. And I'll repeat that again. 1-800-924-5985. Thank you. I'm sorry, that's for donations, yes. Go ahead, go ahead, from the city's perspective. Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Director Takasha Francis with the Department of Neighborhoods for the City of Houston. We house volunteer initiatives which actually connects Houstonians with volunteer opportunities. We have partnered with volunteerhouston.org, which is where we're asking all individuals who want to volunteer to register, and uh, then you will be directed to a volunteer opportunity. Right now, redcross.org is also facilitating volunteer opportunities. So what we would tell the public to do so that you don't have a situation where you're showing up and the volunteer need has been met, make sure you visit those websites and make sure that you register so that you can be assigned where you're needed. There is a need right now for overnight volunteers in shelters, and in a lot of the upcoming uh, volunteer efforts, the overnight staff is what we're really going to need. So make sure you register through those websites so that we can accurately point you to the places where the need is. Thank you. That's what do you I'm sorry, I have a question for you. What are the requirements to volunteer? Because I heard from an undocumented girl that was turned down to volunteer because she doesn't have an ID for her background check. Well, now, we don't control the requirements uh, for redcross.org. I'm not sure if that's where she was trying to sign up. Volunteer.org does not have such a requirement. Uh, Volunteerhouston.org does not have a requirement that I'm aware of. We can talk a little bit more offline because I'd like to investigate that further, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And with that being said, the volunteerhouston.org, too, it is a portal. It leads people to nonprofit organizations. You do not volunteer for volunteerhouston.org. Well, I take that back. You do volunteer for Volunteer Houston, but volunteerhouston.org allows all the other nonprofits access to this wealth of volunteers that we have here in the city. So, was there another question? I'm sorry. So, so yes, yes, go ahead. You mentioned a couple. Of, what was it? The two eight one six five six one five three three number. What was that? Was that for donations? Or? No, that's for volunteers. If you want to call in and ask about volunteer opportunities or what's going on, have a human person to talk to. That's a, one avenue to do that. Uh, and what's the 1-800-924-5985 number? That's for donations. Oh, that's for donations. Mm -hmm. For city county donations. Got it. Um, Not sure if you can answer this question, but for people that are you know, taking the donations, what do they need for, to be able to have some donations? To receive the donations. Yes, to receive the donations. We're not there yet. Okay. So right now, we're just at the point where we're, we're bringing in the donations and sorting them. As you can imagine, I don't know if you guys saw the pictures at, at the George R. Brown Community Center, but there are mounds of clothing there. And people are going to have to go through those and sort them before they can get out to people. And the same is true for all different uh, donations. But we do have avenues to get them out there, but now, today is not the time. Uh, and, and you've got to imagine, too, if, if somebody donates a couch, where's that couch going to go if the home is currently flooded? There's a process that has to take place there, too. Uh, and it's a long process for a lot of people. Um, so it, and it, it can take many years, as the case may be, for, for some people. But that's not necessarily to receive donations to answer your question. Um, but, it, but if somebody's house just flooded, they're not currently in a position to receive a couch. They're going to have to gut the house. They're going to have to clean it. And then it's going to have to be ready. Uh, uh, then, then the couch is, is available for them, of course. 
So that meeting on Tuesday next week is that yes. for the public? Is that for? It's open to the public, absolutely. But it's uh, designed for people to, who want to sort of understand what's going on to come in. And yeah. Okay. It's directed toward the community leaders for those respective organi organizations. Okay. So for organizations, not for like the layperson to necessarily come in and. Just... Uh, of course, the layperson can come. Right. But it's really directed toward organizations that are already striving to do work in some capacity. Uh, can you just generally talk about maybe what types of efforts that you've already done to, for what, you know, so is it like, you know, rebuilding homes or something like that for how many people, like, providing food for how many people, like, just a sort of overview of some of the services. Are you asking for numbers right now? Some sort of ballpark numbers. Or we don't have numbers. Okay. We've got no numbers at this point. Um, in fact, right now, there, there's so many assessments going on, even at the city and county level, we, we don't know our numbers in general. But, uh, but right now, what I can tell you is the, the volunteer efforts have primarily been neighbor to neighbor. The images you're seeing are not being coordinated through a nonprofit, mostly. They're being done because neighbors are genuinely helping neighbors. This is what the country is looking at right now. When they see the outpouring of support of Texans to Texans, they're seeing neighbors helping neighbors right now. So we're just taking that, that heart, that effort that we're already putting forth, and we're organizing it to move forward uh, on a more broad scale. So no, I don't have any numbers, but uh, the numbers are pretty staggering right now looking at what we have ahead of us. So uh, I'm not looking forward to reporting the numbers once we do have a better understanding of it. But uh, I'm going to be really proud of the work that we've accomplished at that time. Anything else? I know a lot of you guys have been here this week, too, this whole weekend. Bless your reporters for giving us the good information you have. So anybody else had, saw a hand raised? No? Nope. Thank you all so much, and thank you for your attention to this important matter. Have a great day.